today I'm going to show you how to make a daisy chain bracelet. I know I have one on my channel already. This one, however, is actually simpler than that one. It's using a little bit bigger beads and a little bit simpler process. I am using the strand of multicolor beads that were in the Splash of Color treasure bag. However, you can use any beads that you want. These are very common, so you do not have to have the treasure bag. And in the next section, we will discuss all that. So let me take this off my wrist, show you what it looks like off the wrist. This is the clasping. This is how cute it looks. And then we will get started. And this is what it looks like off the wrist. So let's go ahead and look at the materials needed for this particular project and get started with the project. Okay, for this project today, we will be using the strand of 4x3 Rondell crystals that you will find in your Splash of Color treasure bag. This is a really long strand. We'll only be using about 15 beads, so you can make several of these bracelets with one strand. If you would like a strand like this, I do have them available on my website, and I will post a link if you want one. If you do not, you cannot get some, whatever, then you can still do this project. Just use any 4x3 Rondell crystal you have on hand. You can use all one color. You can mix a couple strands to make different colors if you would like. Either way, it'll work out just fine. So we'll be using that, and then we will be adding to the treasure bag we will be using 80 seed beads and 11 seed beads and one 80 of another color. So what I have here is a light beige, opaque light beige Toho 80. I have one galvanized permanent finish starlight 80 simply because I want to match it into my clasping. My highlighting beads are going to be, or my accent beads will also be starlight. They are 11 O's. So this is starlight galvanized permanent finish 11 O. I have one 80 in the same color and then I have 80 O's in light beige. And I have those available on the website also. So you can get those if you would like, or just use any seed beads you have on hand in any color scheming you would like. Because I have gold lobster claw clasps in my treasure bag, I am going to use the gold color as my accent. I'm going to use one of the lobster claw clasps that were in the treasure bag, and you can use any clasping you would like. It does not matter. I'm also going to use one wire guardian and I'm using one simply because I have an open jump ring for the other side of my bracelet. If you have a closed jump ring, you can just sew through and it'll be fine. However, I'm going to use one because I have an open jump ring and many times, even if you close your jump ring very tightly, you are putting your bracelet at risk of open the jump ring opening and your clasping falling off and because you're sewing through that, that's very hard to correct. You have to take your bracelet apart. So we're going to do that on one end. This end I can sew on and it'll be fine. So if you want to use a wire guardian on both sides, you can do that too. However, you have to add a jump ring to add your clasping and it will add length to your bracelet. So just keep that in mind. We're going to be using 10 pound nanofill, or I am using 10 pound nanofill. You can also use eight pound nanofill. You can also use six or eight pound fireline. Six would probably be better. I'm using a size 12 beading needle. You can also use a size 10 beading needle. Should work fine for this project. You will need to put onto your needle a wingspan of thread. A wingspan is when you put your arms out from side or to your sides like you're going to fly away and you measure from the fingertips of your first arm, the length of that arm, across your chest, the length of your second arm to the fingertips on that arm. That is a wingspan. We may need to um, extend our fire line or nano fill during this project and I will put a link in the description box beneath the video player if you need to reference that to learn how to extend your fire line or nano film. And that's what we'll be using. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, to begin this project, we are going to make a component for our clasping first on this side. So 
grab your lobster claw clasp or whatever clasping you're using and let's begin by picking up two 11 o seed beads onto our needle and then two of your petal bead color 8 o's and then two 11 o's of your accent color. And this is the portion where we will use the 180 in the gold color. Of course, you can use the petal color also. It doesn't matter as long as it's 80. I just want my clasping to all be gold, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Now, you're going to bring these beads down to the end of your thread. Leave a couple of inches so that you can hold on to it, and then go back up through from the tail side all four uh, or all six of these beads just like this hold on to the beads hold on to your tail between your fingers like this and then pull all of your thread through until you make a little circle like this then we're going to arrange it into more of a circle by pulling the tail and the working thread just like this let me get you in a little closer and now we're going to cross over into the side with the tail sticking out. So we're here, we're going to go into this side here. Just the two 11 O's because we want to retain this shape. So go through the two 11 O's, try not to get your tail involved, pull your thread through. At this point you can't get it real tight because it'll just pull through. Then go into your two eight o's right here. Hold your thumb and finger over it while holding the tail too so you can tug a little bit. And that will start to give you a better shape. And then come up through the two eleven o's on this side. Oh, come on, Gina. Cheese. There we go. Right through those two eleven o's right there. I'm going to move my tail out of the way. Hold on to this tight and pull. So now I have kind of a little triangular shape. I'm going to straighten out these two beads a little bit and that's what I have. Now I'm going to turn this this way and I'm going to pick up my one 8 seed bead regardless of what color you have. Pick up an 8 and then pick up your clasping and drop these down to your piece just like this. Now I'm going to go back into the 8 and then the two 11 O's on this side right here. So the side with the tail coming out. I'm going to put my finger and thumb together and I'm going to pull this down. This allows me to have some tension on it and to have it nice and neat and guide it down with my fingers. Then I'm going to go into the two 8 O seed beads. So we're coming out of the two 11 O's going to go into the two 8 o's. Again, put your thumb and finger together, pull the thread through, give it a tiny tug, and then go up through these two 11 o's on this side, and up through the 8 o seed bead again, and then up through your clasping, back into the 8 o here, down into the 11 o's on this side. So we're just sewing through this completely to reinforce it and then back through the two 8 o's. Now we want to secure this one more time. So go ahead and grab your piece and go up through the two 11 o's, the 8 o, the clasping, down through the 8 o, through these two 11 o's and back through the two 8 o's and we will be back. So it's exactly the same thing we were doing, just secure it one more time and we'll come okay, back. Okay, so I have secured one more time and now I'm coming out of my two petal beads here, my two 8 o's. What I'm going to do is just kind of cut this little thread down. I'm leaving a little bit of a tag because I can burn that down with a lighter or a thread zapper later and have a little blob to actually have some retention, a basic knot up there to hold that even a little bit better. We've sewed through it enough to where it's not going to come out now. So we are going to 
We begin the daisy chain now. We're coming out of this 8 o seed bead right here. We are going to pick up four of our petal beads. So four of the 8 o in the beige for me. And then I'm going to pick up a crystal. And it doesn't matter, I am going to do just whatever color. I'm going to do random color. You can lay out a pattern if you'd like, or just do all one color, it doesn't matter. So we've got four 8-0s in a crystal, and we're going to drop this down to our piece, just like this. Then we are coming out of this side of this 8-0 seed bead. We are going to go between the two 8-0s. So we're going to go into the center and out towards the outside of this bead here just like this, at a diagonal. And we're going to pull these beads up. Now this looks like a mess right now, but that's okay. We will straighten that out. We need to finish the amount of petal flowers or petal beads that we're putting on here. We're going to have eight in total. There's six on there right now, so we're going to pick up two more. We have two 80 seed beads. We are going to go into the bead right behind the crystal. So we're coming out here, we're going to go in to this bead right here. So either right behind or right before the crystal, whichever way you're looking at it. And then I'm just going to put my thumb and finger together like this. I'm going to pull this down so I can guide it. And now I have my little daisy. But this is not going to stay nice and neat, so we're going to sew around it again to make sure that it all stays together nicely. So we're coming out of this bead here. We're going to kind of go in twos just so we don't mess up the arrangement of the petals. So I'm coming out of one here. I'm going to go into one so that I have two on the bottom here like this. And then I'm going to go through two more. And then I'm going to go through two more. And as I do this, I need to pull it together so that it tightens up nice. Go through two more here. I'm going to put my thumb and finger over it, pull it nice and tight, and then go through two more here. So you're coming through the second bead on your bottom set of two. Just like that. Now you can arrange them so they're not so separated or whatever you would like to do. You can even sew through them again if you feel like they still don't look good and they're not tight enough, whatever. You can sew through all of them again as long as you exit this bead here, you are ready to start your next unit. So mine looks pretty good. They're not going to lay perfectly. They're going to spread apart a little bit and that is just kind of the na nature of this stitch. <clears throat> We're going to pick up, now that we're coming out of this bottom bead here, so we're coming out of the second bead in the two, set of two on the bottom of your flower, we're going to pick up an 11 o seed bead, two petal beads, so your two 8 o's, and then an 11 o seed bead. And we're going to go into the first of the set of two here. So we're coming out here, we're going to go in here. Hold on to your flower and just pull that down like that. Now we need to secure this. This is the extension between your flowers. So we are going to go into this 11 0 here. Hold on to it, give it a little tug. Go into these two 8 0s here together. Give a little tug so you get nice tension. And then go into the 11 0 on this side. Now we're doing this in sections to retain the shape. So I'm not just trying to go through all of these beads at once, just in sections. Then I'm going to go through, I'm coming out of the 11 0 I'm going to go into the two petal beads on the flower we've already created. Now I'm going to straighten this out a little bit so it lays like this. And I'm going to sew into the 11 0 and the two 8 0s to start my next flower. So I'll go down into this 11 0 Jeez, there we go and then into the two 8 o's right here. Now I can straighten out my flower a little bit, straighten out my extension, make sure I have good tension, and now I'm going to begin my next flower. So I'm going to pick up four 8 o seed beads onto my needle, 
and then a crystal. And like I said, I'm just doing this randomly. So I'm going to pick up whatever color I want. I'm going to pick up this color. And then I am coming out of this side of this 8 -0. I'm going to go through the middle of the 2 and towards the outside. And just the 8 -0. Don't get through that 11 -0. Like this. And then I'm going to pull this down. And it's going to be all weird. And that's okay. We're going to pick up two more of our 80 C beads, our petal beads. And we're going to find the crystal here. We're coming out of this bead. Here's the crystal. Here's the bead behind it or in front of it, however your perspective is on that. And we're going to go through that bead. And we're going to pull this down. Give it a nice tug. And now we are going to begin again sewing in pairs. So I'm coming out of this one here. I'm going to go into this one. So now I'm through the two bottoms. I'm going to go through these two side beads here. Hold on to it, pull it, make sure it gets nice tension. Go through the two that are attached here. And then through these two. It just makes it easier. It keeps some order so you know where you're at when you're going to connect your next flower. So now you have your two bottom beads here. We'll go through them. And now we will pick up and make sure it looks good. And like I said, if it doesn't look good, just sew through the flower again and exit here. And you will get it to look nice. It, sometimes it takes sewing through it more than once. And that also just makes it stronger, so it doesn't hurt anything. Pick up an 11 0, two 8 0s, and an 11 0. Like this. Go into the bead next to the one you're coming out of in the opposite side. So we're just going to go around these two beads and into them, like this. Pull this down. And this is what you should have, just like this. Now we are going to sew around this entire little connection so that it's nice and secure. We're going to take it a section at a time. So the 11 is the first section. We're going to go through it. The next section are the two 8 0s. We're going to go through them, just like this. Let me back off just a little bit here. And then we're going to go through this 8 -0 here, or excuse me, 11 on this side. And then into our existing flower, the two beads that we're connecting to. Then just straighten it out a little bit. It will straighten as you do your next step, so don't worry about it too much. But I just kind of like to try to keep it clean. So now I'm coming through the 11 0, and then I'm going to come through these two 8 0s, just like this. Now that I'm coming through the two 8 0s, I will begin my next flower. So I will pick up four of my petal beads, just like this. Then I'll pick up a crystal, and I'm going to go up between the two beads and out towards the outside. So through the middle, towards the outside, at a diagonal like this. Just like that. Now I need to pick up the rest of my petal beads, so I pick up two 8 seed beads and find the bead that is right before or right after that center bead right here. So the bead that's in front of the crystal. And pull this down. Arrange it and then start sewing through. So I'm going to sew through this one here. And if you just pick up one right next to where you're coming out, that will start to arrange your pairs for you. Then we're going to go through two. So one, two, two. Go through two more. Go through two more. And now you can go through two more. Like this. Then we're going to make our 
extension, so 11 ohm, two pedal beads, 11 ohm, and then go back into the two on the bottom from the outside, just like this. So the beads you're coming out of, you're going to backtrack and go through the bead next to it. Creating a little circle, basically. Then you're going to secure this by sewing through each section individually. And back into the Eidos here. And then up the 11 0 into the two Eidos here. And again, we'll make one more flower and then we'll go to length. So we're going to pick up four of our petal beads and a crystal. Let's see what color do I want. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So now I have this on my needle, the four Eidos and the crystal. And then I'm coming out of this side of my Eidos. I'm going to go up through the middle and towards the outside. Just like this of the bead next to the one I'm coming out of. Pull it together. Pick up two Edo seed beads and go through the bead behind the crystal or in front of it, I don't know. I, just the one that's right there. Go through that one. <laughs> How's that? Okay, so this is what we have. Now to secure it, if we're coming out here, we want to go just into the one right next to where our thread is coming out. One. And then we go through two, two, two. And then we can go through the bottom two together. So go through two. 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 And then the bottom two here. And then, of course, you will pick up your 11 L, your two 8 O's, and an 11 L. Go into the opposite side of the two you're coming out of, just like this. And then go ahead and secure that and continue making these units until you have 15 flowers. Now, this is all going to depend upon the length of bracelet you want to make. I want to make around seven inches or a little over seven inches. So I have made my units until I can put my lobster claw at the end here. And I have just a little over six inches, about six and a quarter. I want mine to be close to seven, maybe a little over. And by the time I put my clasping on, it should be close to that. Of course, I can put a little extender on this with my jump rings also, if it's not quite long enough. So this is where I am going to end at 15 units. So on my 15th unit, I'm coming out of the two petal beads down here on the bottom, just like I have been all along right before I put on my extension and make my next flower. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I lied, I need another 8 seed bead, so I'm using another in the gold color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my wire guardian here. So let me grab a wire guardian and we will get started here. So what we're going to do is we're coming out of this Ado seed bead right here. We're going to pick up two 11 O's and then we're going to pick up an 8 seed bead and we're going to drop this down. And let me get you in closer. And now I'm going to grab my wire guardian and I am going to just kind of close the bottom together a little bit so that it's narrower. So just gently close those a little bit just by squeezing it very gently. And Sometimes you have to squeeze the top a little bit like that to actually make that work. And that's close enough. I can always squeeze it some more 
after I get it on if I need to. So now I'm coming out of this ADO. I'm going to pick up my wire guardian and I'm just going to go through one side of the wire guardian through the little tube down here and pull this down to my beadwork here. Then I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guardian. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to put it between my fingers and this way I can guide my needle and thread through feeling the thread go through to the divot on the top of the wire guardian. So I'm just guiding it into that divot. And then I'm going to go into this Edo seed bead right here. I'm going to pick it up again and I'm going to guide my thread by holding my fingers here and bring it down to where my thread is now coming out of this Edo seed bead. Now I have to create the other half here to hold this in place. So I'm going to pick up two 11 seed beads and I'm going to go through the opposite side of the two beads on the bottom of the flower that we've been working in all along, just like this, and pull this down. And this is what you should have. Now we're going to sew back up through all of this again just to make sure it's secure and we will do it twice. I'll do it once with you and then we'll do it once off camera. So I'm coming out of this 8 -0. We're going to go up through these two 11 O's here. Go into the 8 -0. Let me see if I can hold that a little better. I'm going to go into the 8 -0 right here and up through the wire guardian on this side right there. Then I'm going to put my thumb and finger together, pull that through. I'm going to go through to the other side, through the wire guardian and the 8 -0. I'm going to hold onto my wire guardian, feel my thread slide down into the divot on top of the wire guardian, and then go into the two 11 O's here. And then I will go back into my two 8 O's. Do that one more time and we'll come back and tie off the thread. Okay, so now I have secured my wire guardian and this is what it should look like, just like this. And now I'm just going to tie off my thread and we will put some jump rings on the end here and we will be finished with our little daisy chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming out right here of the two ADOs after I secured my clasping. I'm just going to sew into the next two and then I am going to go underneath the thread bridge beneath these two beads here. So let's get you in really, whoop, they're too close. Come on camera. Clear up, clear up. There we go. So now I'm coming out of this bead here. I'm just going to kind of go through the middle of my flower between those two beads there. Pull my thread into a circle and or a loop and then just go through that loop with my needle and then pull that loop down into a knot between the beads. Now I'm going to go into these two beads here and kind of straighten out my flower. And like I said, these petals are not going to lay perfectly round and uniform, so don't make yourself crazy trying to do that. It's just the nature of the stitch and the shape of the seed beads. A little bit rounder seed bead tohos are a little bit square. A little bit rounder seed bead might even lay a little bit nicer. But this is just the way a daisy chain usually ends up looking. So now we're going to go, we're coming out of these two beads here. We're going to go into this 11-0. I'm going to go through these two beads here and then again go up underneath this little thread bridge between the beads here, up between the crystal and the beads and pull into a loop, go through the loop, pull a knot down. And then I'm going to sew through these two beads and these two beads here down into this 11 0 into these two beads. I'll tie one more knot on this thread bridge between these two beads. Go through these two
and then through these two and then I'll cut my thread off. So I'm just going to cut this close. You can leave a little tag to burn it down if you would like. And this is what this should look like now. Let me get to it back here. It's just a cute little whimsical thing. Perfect for a little girl or it, I'll wear it. I think it's lovely. So it's perfect whoever wants to wear something just whimsical and sweet. And you can do this in a lot of different color schemes. So this looks more, you know, whimsical and childish. But you could make it like turquoise and black. You could make it silver and and black or turquoise. Or you could make a bunch of different colors that are more sophisticated. And th that would look really nice. So this is what we've got here. Now we're going to open a jump ring. And like I said, if this isn't quite long enough, I can always put a couple jump rings on here. I'm going to use like an 8 millimeter jump ring. You could use 6 millimeter, use several of them, a little piece of chain for an extender, whatever you'd like. So I'm going to open this if I can find my other plier here. So there's the opening of my jump ring. I have my plier on one half. I'm going to place the other plier on the other half, twist it open, and then just put it onto the wire guardian and then close it. Now, if my jump ring opens, I can just put another one on there. However, if I had attached it directly to the jump ring and it opens, then your bracelet will fall apart. And I have done it. I have even done tutorials where I've just made sure I shut it really tightly and sewn through it. But eventually it does it is a weak point in the bracelet. So this works out well. And this side, I didn't put a wire guardian simply because I don't feel that it needs it. So I didn't. You can if you want to. It'll add a little length, but that's okay. If that's how you want to do it, do it that way. Now I can put this on. I'm going to do it off camera and show you what it looks like. And this is what it looks like on the wrist. I think it's really cute. Now, you know, you could do this ombre. So you could do it like in a dark red and then a medium color and then a pink and then a clear or something like that. Make it ombre. You could arrange the colors any way that you would like. You could do red and green, red and green. You could do silver and black, whatever. And um, you could make this look a lot more sophisticated than it does just by changing the coloring scheme. So this particular pattern has a lot of potential. It doesn't have to be just your simple little cute whimsical daisy chain. You could make it look however you want it to. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.